What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. This is the Third Person Podcast. And with me today is my other co-host, Jesse. How's it going? Guys, what are we doing today? Well, we saw Rogue One. Star Wars Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Right? Rogue Rogue One, One, a Star Star Wars Wars story. story. Uh, We saw it. We're going to talk about it for you. And uh, we're going to do it in a spoiler-free section. And then we're going to do spoiler section. Just like we did the uh, Luke Cage stuff. Uh, so, without further ado, we did that. yeah, let's just get right into it. So, mark your calendars, mark the time codes. It's time for spoilers. No, no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Spoiler free. <laughs> We're going. Spo- I'm trying to throw Jesse off his game right now. You're not uh, gonna throw me off my game. <laughs> let's go into spoiler free, guys. Spoiler free. Um, I want to say this movie was pretty damn good. Yeah. I hundred uh, percent mirror that uh, that I, I guess you call it an analysis. No, not really. That review of it. Um, I I love this movie. It, it was great. Yeah, it was it it was a lot better. All right, so I don't know about you, but I went I went in with no expectations. Um, I just I just wanted it to be decent. I was like I just I just wanted it to be cool. I wanted it to be fun. I wanted it to be Star Wars. Um. I think I think it was, I think it was. There's a lot of reasons. It was why. Star Wars, definitely. There's a, it was to be honest with you, it was more Star Wars than uh, Force Awakens. Hmm. All right, let's. Uh, let's... I'm not. I'm not going to say that far. It was more Star Wars than some of the prequels. I'll, I'll give it that. Okay, but what more old school Star Wars, original old school Star, Star Wars. Wars, definitely. That's what I. That's what. That's what I specifically mean. Um, there's a lot of, um, recycled footage melded yeah. into this, which gives it that feel. Um, it's a lot, it's grimy. It looks, it looks, you know, uh, the thing with this is it, it looks and feels like the original star Wars trilogy yeah. did because that's at a time, you know, well after the clean period of when the Jedi were around all the prequels and stuff like that. Um, and that was a lot of CGI. What they've done is that there's plenty of CGI in the film, but they've yeah. made it. Maybe the CGI has just gotten better over the years, or they just made this movie look and feel like the original trilogy. So if you're looking for that, Gareth Edwards, who was a director, did a fantastic job doing that. Uh, Absolutely. Um, um, what else? <laughs> it's it's hard because we're we're in spoiler free right now. A lot but. of practical effects too. Still a practical, yeah. A lot of good practical stuff. Um, and I, I love that especially because you get to see the Star Destroyers. Some of them are recycled footage. But then some of them you can tell are newer like CGI or practical effects uh, driven. And they do a great job of melding the practical and the CGI, uh, especially with the models. Yeah. they um, and, and the acting, like the actors that they got, the characters, the characters fit really well into this particular story in this universe. Um, very, very reminiscent of the, you know, cantina scenes and stuff on, on some of the planets we've seen. Again, just it just had this, the original Star Wars feel. That's one of the biggest things that I took away from this. Um, uh, there was some, some humor, uh, some Star Wars humor. Star Wars always had the humor where it was like, wasn't in your face, it was a little dry, yeah. You know, but wasn't over your head, you know, that's my style of comedy. Right. So um, some very cool. So and it had some of that humor, you know, it had a little intrigue. You had some character development in there. Um, I think the actors played their roles pretty, pretty well. You know, I don't think um, there was one thing that I wanted to talk about when we get into spoilers that kind of threw me for a little bit. But um, for the most part, you know, um, everyone who, who played, you know, girl who played um, Jen Urso, um, Forrest Whitaker, Saul Guerrero, uh, yeah. everybody, you know, Donnie Yen, they, you know, uh, uh, Cassian Andres, Diego, was... Diego. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Diego's character. Uh, yeah. Cassian. I forget his last name. Right now. Uh, they just really referred to him as Cassian. Right. But he's a captain and uh, his character. Was Andor. Really yeah. Andor. There we go. Uh, K2SO played by the wonderful <laughs> Alan Tudyk. Yeah, he was um, he was more or less the comic relief um really good at it 
how C in the vein in the vein of C three PO. How C three PO was always like the comic relief. Leave it to the droid to make up. Uh, you know, have a, have the funny line or 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 not not to be not like the, to be funny, but he's got to have that non sequitur that that final say the final word. You know, like it was yeah. it was it worked really well. I think a lot of this movie worked really really well. Um, difference between this, I actually enjoyed this more than Force Awakens. I did. And I'm going to tell you because The Force Awakens, although it was fantastic and it was great to be back and to see that stuff, it, it felt too new. It felt new. It didn't have the feel that this one has. Not only that, it, it was recycled Star Wars. Let's, let's fucking be honest. It's still a good movie. Don't get me wrong. I still really enjoyed yeah. The Force Awakens because it was, was different characters, but it was still a recycle. I know, I know, I have the same <laughs> one, um, but it was a recycle. I enjoyed it enough to buy it. Well, yeah, me too, absolutely. Well, I have all of them anyway, so. But I mean, yeah. it was just a recycled New Hope. Let's not, let's not split hairs here, it was. But that's fine, because that's, how, that's what they had to do, we get that. This stands on its own. It absolutely, not only does it stand on its own, it takes you, yes, this, so we all know the story, it's a, a group of, people who are going to get the death star plans and how they get the plans and everything we'll we'll talk about in spoilers but that's I mean, the story that's what the whole that's thing the basic is about story how right. they get to it and there's the little stories in between of the, the characters and stuff but i don't know I, I i actually really enjoyed it i really enjoyed it um what else jesse what else that we can talk that we can say about it that it uh uh so i'm about as big a star wars nerd as you can get and I, I could sing it praise to high heavens, and there's some things about it that you're not going to like if you're going to see it in the theaters. It's just – it's – certain aspects are too crisp and clear on the big screen that you won't really catch on a smaller screen. But when you're seeing it on like a big – what is it, 70-millimeter screen in a theater? 70-foot uh, screen? It's 70-foot screen. So 70-millimeter film. That's film, what I mean. yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're seeing it on that, you're going to see these little minute details and you're not going to want to praise it to high heaven. But after you like look back on it and you think deep and hard about this movie at its core, it is the star Wars movie we should have got from some of the prequels. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because they, they, it has the flaws just like the originals do. Yeah. The, the originals are not, by any stretch of the imagination, masterpieces of film. No, but that's what makes them good. Right. They have their flaws. They have the little the little plot holes. They have this little thing. And, and this does as well, but in the vein of Star Wars, in that universe, the same way that the original trilogy did. And, and yep. again, that's the biggest thing I took away, especially thinking back on it after seeing it. You know? I'm sorry. I did cut you off, though. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh... But to compare it to like the prequels or Force Awakens or something like that, I like some parts of the prequels. Sue me if you will. I like some parts of it. I, I like the Force Awakens for what it was, which was a new look into the series, and I love the original trilogy. I've seen it probably since I was eight years old about 60 times now. Yeah. Um, I watch it once, maybe twice a year. depends on the mood. And this is a movie I can add to that collection and watch again repeatedly because it just adds to the story so well. Yeah. Death Star? Ah, uh, Death, Death Star. Death Star. <laughs> Death, Death Star. Star was cool. Uh, we got to see the Death Star do some stuff that... Um... We got to see a great shot of the Death Star in yeah. particular. Yeah. And that that part's near the end of the movie, so we can't go too into detail right. about it, but you really get to see the scale of it. We see, and we, we get to see, well, we get to see it in action twice yeah. on a smaller scale than we saw and in A New Hope. And you get to see that it can do this certain function yeah. that I didn't think the Death Star could yeah. in the original movie, which yeah. is kind of cool. Um, I also, uh, uh, I, I, you, know, you know what, maybe I'll save it for spoiler. Um, yeah, I'll save it for, for, for a spoiler. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What else? Uh, what else did we got? I mean, we, we said about the characters, uh, fun characters, good characters. Everyone played their role really well. Everyone had a role. It yes. was there weren't there weren't just random people around. There's a there's a, also a bunch of cameos. There's a lot of Easter eggs and a lot of cameos, literal cameos, character cameos yeah. in this. Um, however brief they are, or some not so brief, and then a lot of throwbacks to 
Star Wars, which is funny because it'd be more like a throw forward, considering it's a prequel. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it would be. Um, we'll save the cameos and stuff because they're in the spoiler territory somewhat. But uh, one thing I really, really enjoyed, and I think you're right there with me. It, it's no surprise we get to see Yavin. Right. Because that's where the rebel base is. Right. That's Yavin Four. He's speaking about. Yeah, Yavin 4, the Rebel base, when our main cast is coming into Yavin, we get to see the um, the Sentinel checking out the ship, just like in the original movie. Yeah. And that is one throwback that I absolutely love to see, yeah. because that it made it feel like Star Wars. Do you mean, you mean the dude, right? The uh, Yeah, the one yeah. out there with the radar gun. With the radar yeah. gun, yeah. Um, doing, uh, yeah, uh, keeping watch and, and, and tracking the ships coming in and out. That's what I'm saying. There was a lot of things in here. Um, you know what they, okay, so you know what they didn't do? So we know they did a lot of reshoots, right? Yeah. You know, like that, that original like trailer, half the shit in that trailer is not in this movie. Yeah. For yeah, example, like the, the shot when she's, scene. right. Yeah. The, the, when she's walking across the, 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 that, uh, uh, the dr- little bridge and the TIE fighter comes up. Yeah. That's not in it. Um, what else? She's never behind the seat of a, a spacecraft in this. And don't get me wrong, that's not really a spoiler. Trust me. Yeah. But it, it's funny because they focus so much on her behind the seat in that one shot in that yeah, trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... So they did a lot. And I say for the better. I say I yeah. say it's fine. Um Felicity Everyone, Jones killed it. Yeah, she did a really good job. She did, an, you know, another brunette in that. You know, that's that's uh that's something that they like to keep. Um, and that's fine with me. You know, as the, as a heroine, they um, it's not a surprise that Vader's in this. We've seen no. it in the trailer. Um, we will say, <clears throat> we will say that uh, we get to see Vader in a way that, unless you've played the video games or read books, Star Wars books, that you know. You haven't really seen. Before. Yeah, you, you, so, well, yeah. Ch- stick stick around for the spoilers, so you know. Hopefully, you've seen. Especially if you love the video game stuff, because we've got like two things from the video games. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So definitely some good stuff in here. Um, but yeah, Vader. Vader shows up. Uh, he's not in it a lot, but the nah. but when he is, he's he's exactly he's what he's exactly what you want him to be. Um, if you want a lot of Vader, go watch. Uh, Rebels. Okay, if you want, if yeah, you want go whole watch thing Rebels. about yeah, go watch Rebels if you want everything about Vader and you want to see him all like all the time. Um, I don't know. Um, how did you? Uh, what did you how, compare this to? Um, the other movies, say like the prequels or Force Awakens. I mean, we kind of mentioned Force Awakens already, but better than the prequels, a little bit better than Force Awakens, and right there on par with the original trilogy. That, yeah. That's where I'm going at right now. I, I'm I'm gonna wholeheartedly agree. I think it. I'd put it up there with, um, like Jedi and and um, yeah. A know. New Hope's always well number four. Is yeah, always, yeah. Episode four, A New Hope, the first Star Wars film, I think is the. I got best. all three versions of the original VHS. So yeah, call it what you yeah. Want. I uh, I had them all on VHS, and then I got them all on DVD, and I haven't gotten them on Blu-ray yet. But um, nah, nah. I'm going to hold off on that one. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I think I would put it Star Wars first, then Empire, Jedi, and Rogue One. Um, although, yeah. I, I, have a very, I have a real special thing with Jedi because I actually... That was the first Star Wars movie I saw in the theater. I was six. Five or six. And I... I actually got to see all of them in the theater, even though I'm a lot younger. <laughs> yeah. Did you even remember them? Yeah. Dude, you must have been like, because if I was five or six, like. Well, remember, I'm like 17. No, no, not 17 years young. I, I'm younger than you. And. Uh, You're over 10 years had, younger, though. So. Yeah, I'm over 10 years. I'm like 12 years younger. So I'm like 13 years. Yeah. But the thing is, they actually replayed them all in the original order they came out. Yeah. In anticipation for the release of oh, uh, right. Revenge of the Sith. Right. I actually went and to the movie. So and saw when those I was little, you. I got to see so all you got. Of them. Okay. So I. But I'm saying. The first one, because I was too young in in the seventies. I think the first one came out in seventy two, and then yeah. um, seventy four, seventy three or seventy four. Yeah, uh, no. um, I think they skipped two years or three years. Yeah, well, seventy five maybe. I 
Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, seventy five, and then, then later yeah. on it was after. So I so I got to see Jedi in the theater, and I fell asleep when Yoda dies, and then I woke up later and I was like, because he was sick, and, right? He was sick. I'm like, oh no, um, Yoda's sick, um, and then I fell asleep, and then I woke up because it was late. We went to a late movie. And late for me, it's like nine o'clock. You know, you're fucking five years old. You're fucking tired. I woke up. I'm like, oh no, he's dead. What happened? They were like, shh. I'm like, damn it. Uh, so it has like, and then and then I have a, I have a a memory of the next thing I remember is one Sunday morning, my dad was, I woke up and like, my brother was asleep. This is before my sisters were born. Like, this was like, we're young. My brother's still sleeping. And he's like, he's like, my dad brings me into the living room. And he, we had a big, like 60 inch, um, rear projection TV. And he's like, I have something for you. And he had he had it on VHS and, uh, nice. and he played it. And I just, and I literally, I laid a pillow behind my head and I had put my feet up on the bottom of the wood paneled fucking bottom of the, of the TV and I just laid there staring, and I watched it, like, all day. I just kept rewinding it and watching it over and over. So I've probably seen Jedi at least 30 times. I, I think I've seen Jedi more than any of the other films. Yeah. But I have to say Empire holds that special heart, uh, place in my heart just for the fact that that's technically the first one I've seen fully. Yeah. Because I didn't get to see A New Hope fully uh, during that showing. Right. So, yeah, so... I don't know. So yeah, but anyway, Rogue One definitely, as we did our little tangents, Rogue One definitely is definitely. is in there. So um, all right, I guess is that is that good? Are we good with that? I mean, I don't want to. We we don't want to go too much into the spoiler free, but again, if you if you enjoy a good cast, a good movie, and Star Wars, this is it. You got Felicity Jones, Mad Nicholson's um, Diego. Yeah, very good. Diego. <laughs> I'm forgetting his name here. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, um, uh, dang it. Diego Luna. Yeah, Diego Luna. There we go. You got so many good actors there bringing these characters to life, and you're going to enjoy the movie. Yeah, definitely. So, all right, let's do it. Let's, so, I think we get into spoilers now. Let's let's jump into uh, let's jump into spoilers. Yes, finally. <laughs> all right. What's the story about? They're Jin Erso, Jin Erso's father. Okay. Jyn Erso's father helped create the... I'm not going to recap the whole thing, but Jyn Erso's father helped create... The Death Star. Yeah, the original like plans the, for the, the original Star. plans for the Death Star. Um, in the beginning of the movie, he gets his... Um, he's hiding out, pretending to be a farmer, but they, you know, uh, Krennic finds him. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, ben Mendo. Ben Mendelsohn. He finds yeah. him. He says, listen, we need you to come back. He's like, I'm not coming back. My wife's dead, blah, blah, blah. He's like... Wife's not dead. Yeah. They kill the wife. They go looking for the daughter, Jin. They can't find her. She's she's picked picked up by Saul Guerrero, Forrest Whitaker, who is a character from Rebels, one of the Easter eggs. And she grows up. He goes to do that. Come to find out that, um, you know, the Rebels are... You know, they need, they need her to contact her father. Or there's a message from the father that for Saul and she ends up getting yeah. the message and they have to go. And, um, he says that I, I put something in the death star that can blow it up. So really over explaining the fact that because, you know, cause we're all like, why the hell would there be this one stupid malfunction? So this was the perfect opportunity. Like, you know, the, the, the whole yeah. reason that one little exhaust port, but one, basically you could throw a rock at it and it would blow up. That's basically the way, um Gernoso's father explained it he's like just any explosion near it will yeah. set off a chain reaction and destroy it now we get it so it's a way for them to we be actually like saw an explosion in the original movie near it though so that wasn't true right well he hit it directly those proton torpedoes hit it that shit directly man well I'm, I'm talking about um i think it was red leader no no not red leader um whoever went in before luke oh yeah no 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 yeah. no 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 inside not not outside oh, on yeah, the wall. True. He missed it the first time. Yeah, it's got to yeah. go. It had to be at least inside that chamber. The way he explained it in Rogue One kind of gave the feeling like anywhere yeah. near it, though. So, right. So basically, um, and then uh, Diego Luna's character, he's a he's a spy for the rebels. And he's 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 not a great dude. He's a kind of a bad dude. He kills people. He killed his informant. He'll kill if he has to. He's he's also a hitman. He's sent to kill. He takes Jin, and they're supposed to go and find her father on one of the planets and on, at one of the engineering facilities, and he's supposed to kill him. Come to find out, 
she you know she finds out that there there is this weakness. No one knew about this weakness until she found out that got this message. Um, yeah. When we when we find out about that is when we get to see the first uh, uh, Death Star. We see get to see it in action. Yes, and right? that was an amazing shot. Yeah. Go ahead, tell them about that. Um. So we get we're in the spoilers, so screw it. Tarkin, uh, Tarkin's there. They brought yep. him back from the dead. Fucking goddamn uh, Grand Moff fucking Tarkin. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, let's real quick talk about it. He's all CGI. It was an actor who played the body double, but he was CGI yeah. face. I don't think it was the best. It wasn't the best, but it was good. It was good. It. Don't get me wrong. It looked really good, but I could definitely tell now maybe many people but see everyone's used to cgi now and i think people know what that's CGI one looks of those like. things on the big screen i was talking about i think yeah. it's gonna look great when you scale it down to your watch it on like a tv or, or something yeah i i agree but on the big screen yeah he he look he look he looked great he looked great don't get yes. me wrong look just like him a little younger perhaps actually no not really because he was they didn't really age much it was all at the same time anyway yeah when the movie ends so um, exactly. But I could definitely tell. You could tell Weta didn't do it. And Weta being the New Zealand um, effects house that did all the Lord yeah. of the Rings stuff. A, you know, i.e. Gollum, uh, you know, wargs, orcs, you know, they do amazing work. Had they done it, I think they would have. ILM. Is, ILM did a great I, job. ILM though. used to be that, but Weta, I think, is even better. But anyway, look good. I, I could definitely tell. Um, but yeah, definitely. Tarkin's in it fantastic very very cool yeah. we got again just a th awesome throwback so they so go ahead jesse so tell them tell them what they're using kyber crystals for and kyber what, crystals go ahead. yeah what are kyber crystals uh, the crystals that power a jedi's lightsaber which they brought back from the extended universe which i'm glad they did yeah um but they're using kyber crystals to power this death star and tarkin's like well, we need to give an example of the power to Lord Vader and the committee. And guess what they do? They target Saw Gerrera's palace, underground bunker, whatever. Now, this planet is 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 Jeddah, and this is where... Yeah, Jeddah. This is where the... You understand, I think that's where the Jedi... That's why they, they get the the name Jedi. Is that where they get the uh, name Jedi? Because that was their first into temple. the Void, yeah. the book, that's no longer canon, um, they're planet was similar in name yeah. to Jeddah. And although That's they don't they, got. they don't take everything from the extended universe, they take what they need. Yeah. Which I'll get to later about the video games later. Um but Kyber Crystals, Jeddah, all that, it all comes from the extended yeah. universe in which Jeddah is the home planet of the original Jedi. J E apostrophe D A I I. Yeah. Before they um, had lightsabers and everything, they yeah. were just they were they were rangers of the universe. Yeah. Jedi Rangers is what they were yeah. called. Uh, what a sick book. That was so cool. It, it was good. Yeah. Um, this movie does a great job of incorporating some of the older elements of the expanded universe, some of the newer elements, and then bringing them to canon for the people that love both uh, universes. But they blow up the uh, city, the temple, the holy ground, and it forms a shockwave that is just massive and destructive. And it was one – he says – I don't want to get the wording right. Does he say use one core? I think it was one core. It's one I, core. It was either one core or one quarter, meaning the power. No, no, not core. I don't think it was quarter. I think it was one. I, I couldn't really hear that. Oh, part. maybe quarter. Maybe it was. But he said I it more know. than once because it happens more than once in the movie. Yeah. We're jumping a little bit, but they use it again on at the, the end. Uh, at the end. Um, again, one core or quarter of the power where it's it, it's it doesn't destroy the whole planet. It's just basically decimating. It, it's a surface explosion. It, it's a surface explosion, on um, you know, not unlike the um, uh, H bomb, the atom bomb. Yeah, that more America or less than atom on, bomb on um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So it's picture that only like a thousand times worse. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, so we get to see that. So that was that was amazing because it was like we only saw the Death Star once and it blew up Alderaan, and you're like, oh my god, like that's insane. You know that was, but this seeing it at this smaller scale you know um also we don't i don't think we ever get this in the movies but the death star can actually uh go to hyperspace yes don't and we we'll see that at the end don't know how it can do that but it does it well it's a space station it pops through 
Yeah, but space stations are don't normally fly. Well, we do see it in the movies because it has to get to. Um, it does. Well, we know it moves. Yeah, you're right. We, I know, but we never actually Gavin. hear heard of it though. We never actually heard it. Um, like no, I don't. But I don't remember anyone. It, it saying was kind of implied hybrid. in the yeah. originals. Yeah, sure, sure. But I just like that he, they said it here. It was pretty cool. So, uh, other than destroying uh, the main city of Jeddah, they they've done an amazing job with the characters here um i i know you said you didn't like tarkin but i like the cgi tarkin more than you did uh no i liked it i just didn't i just think it, i just thought it could have looked better but anyway go ahead i believe your words were it looked cheesy it did a little bit sometimes it did <laughs> yeah a little bit uh but god the cgi in this again jumping ahead we get to see leia young again at the end, both. we see Leia, another CGI We get to see character. both the original Leia and the original Star Wars, and then we get to see, or before that, we get to see a new CGI form of her. Yeah. And if you look at it quickly, you can't tell the difference, but there's a slight difference, and I liked it. Yeah. You can tell, you can differentiate between the new film and the old film. So this film ends, and we're, again, we're jumping a little bit, but the film ends right where A New Hope starts. Yes. Literally right there. The ship that you see at the beginning of a new Antilles hope. Antilles and all them dying yeah. in the hallway. They, yeah. they, they, yeah. It ends right as that ship gets away. We know that they're gonna, they're gonna jump. Wait, no, they don't jump, do they? No, they, they don't chase get to jump. because is it because it's because they're they're at yeah they're at they're over, but they're not over Scarif. Tatooine though. Um, I guess they crashed, did jump. They must have that. That's what I thought. He must have jumped because they they weren't over because Yavin Four is not over Tatooine. So, well, no, no, they weren't on Yavin. They were on Scarif. Oh, Scarif, right. But Scarif's, again, Scarif's not over Tatooine. Eh. So they must have well, jumped. Yeah, they must have jumped. Or Scarif could be close to Tatooine. Who knows? Maybe. Either way. Okay, whatever. Point is, movie ends right where that starts. Yes. You know? And it does an amazing job. There's this hallway scene with Vader. Um, you get to see why he's on the ship. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to him. Yeah. Um, what? Let's talk about. Um, so, I mean. Yeah, so uh, without going too much into the plot, they yeah. end up, you know, th things happen where they end up having to, they go rogue to get the plans for the Death Star because the, yes. the plans for the Death Star on, are, in, are on a bit, what the hell's the name of that, that tropical planet? I forget the name. Scarif. Planet. Oh, that's Scarif, right. Duh. What? Why did I? Plans are on Scarif. Um, there's a, a planetary shield, which plays a major which role. Which was awesome. Which was fucking dope as shit. Um, they get down in the shield. They get down um, using a stolen ship. Um, what's his name? Uh, Boz, who plays Bodhi. Uh, no, uh, uh, Riz Ahmed, who was in The Night Of on HBO. He plays Bodhi Rook, who's a, a, a turned, um, like a reformed cargo pilot for the... Um, yeah, Imperial from, pilot. From the, yeah, and he's, in, he's the one that got the information from uh, Galen or, or so to Saul, Soa. Uh, Saw Guerrero and you know so he wants to be on the rebels and stuff there's a weird scene where there's this okay he, here's some of the weird shit one of the weird things about the movie which is kind of a throwback to like maybe like Jedi and and Star Wars or whatever because even I guess Empire too weird slimy creature so there's a creature that they and I forget what it was called like Bo Do something like that Bo something it, it's a mind reading it's a mind reading slug and basically they 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 use it to, to get the information to see if, if, um, uh, uh, Bodhi is, is a real, is telling the truth. So that was kind of, that was kind of weird. There's another thing I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and so they end up and they go, they go get the, the information. And, uh, so they have to, it's a really great race against time yeah. to bring down the shit. So again, you have the situation where very similar to Jedi, where you have to bring down the shield Yep. And time to get information out. So it's this it's this really cool setup where this group of people is trying to do this while this group of people is trying to do this. And if it all makes it, the information will get out and hit, get get to the rebel fleet, and then they'll get the plans and and they get it off. And 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 that's essentially what happens. Um, we're not going to go into detail about it. I mean, uh, if you've seen yeah. the movie, you know what we're talking about. If you haven't seen the movie, go see it. And, 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 you know, so you can see, but they, they end up getting the plans. And by they, I mean, uh, Cassian 
and Jin. They end up getting the plans. They end up getting it out. Um, and obviously they get it out, but we see them get it yeah. out and stuff like that. Um, where do you want to go from here? Because uh, we talked about Tarkin. We can talk about uh, some of the characters like uh, K2SO. Before we get to the characters, I want to talk about a certain ship in particular. Okay. That I see people crediting to uh, Rebels and such. Okay. The Hammerhead Cruiser. Yeah. I that was not from Rebels. It is from Knights of the Old Republic video game. That is the original, uh, yes. Original. Yeah. And it is a flagship for that game where it is amazing and we get a scene with it that is just phenomenal. Say it. Tell us tell us what the scene was. This was in this was in the fight at the uh, end, the air battle for the yeah. shield to bring down the shield. Which you can play in the new Star Wars Battlefront game. Yeah. Uh but you, there's this scene where this destroyer gets hit by these proton torpedoes, uh, or ion, ion torpedoes, I believe it was, was because power. that's what disables yeah. them. Shuts the power down on it. They take a hammerhead cruiser, ram it directly into the side of it. Now, I thought they was going to use it as a boarding party because you can use a hammerhead for that too. Yeah. No, they take it, they push it down at a diagonal angle into another cr- uh, destroyer, and they slice off the top of it. But it doesn't stop there. It keeps going with both cruiser or destroyers, and it takes down the freaking uh, shield net. Yeah. And that scene there, like, I, I if I was yeah. in the theater, I would have jumped up out of my seat and started clapping. I was, I was amazed. I was like, that is some of the coolest shit. It was. And sli- you know that was a mix of practical and CGI. It had uh, to. It looks so good, and it sliced the, it sliced through the 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 top of the the second destroyer just taking it right off and then right into yeah. the shield taking down the shield and then they got the the thing got the, they they sent out the the um the plans and um uh now it wasn't um the the the, the guy who got the plans uh wasn't uh Akbar but one of Akbar's race Amon Kalamar he yeah. He ended up getting the plans and they got it digital and, and everything. And, um, dude, it was just, it was just, it was so good. It was great. It was so good. Way better than Phantom Menace's fucking, uh, yeah. remember that was the same situation. They had to get the shield down, uh, so they could get out or whatever. No, yep. this, this was way better than that. Mainly because yeah. it looked, it just, it looked really good. And, and so like we mentioned earlier, they cut footage like extra, like recycle, they recycled footage of Pilots in X wings, actual yes. footage of them flying X wings, right you from Red Five die. Yeah, we saw Red Five die, which we know um, that's Luke's uh, call sign. He becomes Red Five in in A New Hope. He takes that guy's place, but they intercut that footage into this movie, just giving it that extra, you know, oomph of personal feel. Yeah, of uh, how it's so tied into the very next movie that's coming, you know, a new hope. And it was, yep. it was stuff like that. That was like, it just made it, this felt more like star Wars than any of the prequels. And even the Phantom Menace for me, I'm telling you, you know, well, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Force Awakens. Sorry. Um, yeah. So uh, let's, let's talk about um, some of the characters. You want to talk about K2SO? K2SO. Oh, we mentioned yeah. it earlier. We mentioned it earlier. Uh, oh, well, you know what? I guess not so much. It was a lot of funny. There's a lot of funny stuff in there. I think I mentioned it already. You know what? I'm sorry. I kind of mentioned it. Um, he was funny. He was really funny, though. He was. He had a lot of yeah. good lines. It wasn't forced. He was. He had a purpose. Again, every character had a purpose, which is fantastic. I've got a bad feeling about... They said and the they line, and, she, and they told him to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, shut yeah, up. He, and they, he started off, and it's like, I got a bad feeling about shut up. Yeah, it was so great. It was really, really cool. He was a fun yeah. character. Um, what about? Uh, can we talk about Chirrut, Imwe, um, Donnie Yen, yes. and his and his protector I'm one Baz with the force and the forces with me. A moment the force and the forces with me. A moment the force. Okay, so Baz and Chirrut are were protectors of the temple, yep. and they're no longer protectors of the temple. There isn't really a temple. Uh, Saw actually he built. You know, that's his hideout inside the temple or the yep. surrounding mountain or whatever. Um, uh, and, and the reason they're on, uh, Jetta is because they're taking Kyber crystals and they're using it to power the Death Star. That's why they're yep. there. And so, um, so Chirrut and Boz, they're this really cool team. Boz is, is a, is a, um, he's, he's a support character in more than one way. Uh, yeah. his gun is a, is a, you know, it's a, it's a mini gun. It's a, it's a, 
Um, he's got a bunch of like gadgets and stuff. It's an Omni rifle. Right. Chira is blind, but he's, and again, we keep saying he's force sensitive. Um, yeah. The director was saying most likely because he was been around the Jedi and around the temple so much as a guard, you know? Um, yeah. But I do want to say this is, a, here's another hiccup for me. All right. Although it was a f- the, the scene that followed when he, dis- he decimates that, that, group of um stormtroopers yeah when we first see him in action yeah it was a little indulgent and what i mean by that is it tried to do be like an old japanese uh martial arts movie but it for me it didn't really hit so for example he gets in and he gets in stance and he turns his head and he hears he sees you see the stormtrooper foot move and you hear the crunch and he hears the guy breathe and this and then he goes at them and they attack him and stuff for some reason, it was like I felt like it. Oh, I kind like, of you liked it, but it beat me like, over the that that again that very specific those those very quick cuts, kind of made me like cringe a little. Like oh, you're kind of forcing. That was very out of Star Wars for me. Do you understand? I liked it though because th- remember it's not Star Wars, a hundred percent not Star Wars, very Star Wars esque, and it's since. But it has its own unique things, right. such as that scene there. Yeah. And I, I absolutely love that because that meant two things to me. Not just – I'm holding up two on two hands. Not just <laughs> that he's Force-sensitive, but that his Force-sensitiveness doesn't just be a role where he can scam. Where he has intuition, that. right? It's it's yeah. actual – it enhances it, it his, the rest of his sight. senses. Yeah, the rest of his senses are enhanced. Now, yeah. the scene that follows is – one of the best fucking scenes, um, yes. and we've seen it. We've seen portions of it already in the trailers. But he beats the shit out of these guys, and it's fucking dope. It's so good, you know. He's so good, and um, and then they, I love their. I love their their team. I love the team of of um, you know, Boz and Chirrut. I love their their camaraderie. He's always saving him. He's like, well, that's what I have you for. Uh, there's some funny lines from Donnie Yen. Like they put bags over their heads to take them to Saw, and he's like. And he puts it. They put the bag really? over his head. I'm he's blind. like, he's like, really? <laughs> it's really good, man. It's really good, it you is. know. I cracked um, up at that. One. I audibly cracked up at that one. I was also very <laughs> upset when I did too. I was very upset when they both died. Yes, they both died um, at the end. Um, I liked how uh, how Baz went out though. Oh yeah, very platoon esque yeah. in a way. Yes. Okay, so let's briefly talk about how they shot this movie. They wanted it to be Saving Private Ryan. And 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 I think they did a fantastic job at yeah. grounding the action, made it more like Battlefront, made it like Saving Private Ryan, really showed how people fucking, you know, how how fight. they fought. Gareth Edwards, again, the director, he's like he 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 modeled it after the fight on Hoff, which he says, in my mind, this isn't a direct quote, but I'm paraphrasing. He says in his in his mind he he always remembered that being like a half hour long. He's like, but in the movie, it's like two minutes. It he's, really is. Yeah. And he's like, and that really spoke to me. And he's like, and I really wanted that to happen. So what do we have? We have muted shots. We have ear rings. You know, yeah. it's like that ear when, when an explosion happens. We have that sense of danger. Like, oh shit, if I get up, I'm going to get, I get up and he gets shot. You know, if someone will yeah. get shot, like it was fantastic. Now, the it Force Awakens. Me of Endor. Yeah. But uh, but without but Endor was fun. Endor, you knew the your main characters weren't going to get good hurt. Guys was gonna win, yeah. yeah, there was no sense of danger there. This, I expected everyone to die, and practically everyone did. Um, Actually, everyone on the planet more or less did. Yeah, pretty much. Um, well, at least in that general area. I don't know what other inhabitants were on the planet, but um, it was just it. It was really. It was just it was grounded and it was fantastic and, yeah. and again there was this real sense of of like danger in all of it you know um, again the, the character work was great everyone had a role Bodhi doing his you know fighting his fear to get to get that thing in the up uh, linked the, up the, the cord linked up and then they it all worked it just worked really well it was really I found myself like oh man oh man okay 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 come on you know what I mean like. It was great, man. It was just fucking great. It was really good. I I enjoyed especially that scene with Bodhi because right after it, 
he dies, but you get the sense of accomplishment because he's gone up to the uh, to the rebels up there, and he he's just like, hey, get the shield down. We've got I, I believe he even says Cassian and Jenner. So over here, trying to get the plans to you. We need the shield down. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, yeah, yeah. I I connected with. It. I was like. Sense of urgency, yes. And then when he died, I was actually a little sad. Yeah, they all die. <laughs> they all fucking die. All the good guys die. Every, everybody dies. Planet. Everybody dies. And, and uh, you know, that was kind of like, guess that. Which is, it's really sad to me because I, I really enjoy these characters. But if they stuck around, you know that, that they're eventually going to start milking the characters. Well, not only that, what, what, there's no reason for them to be alive anymore, though. We're, th- we're already 30 years ahead I now. like how they just threw the wrench in everybody's uh, theory that Jin was Ray's mother. Oh, I just didn't like, believe nah, that Nah, screw all. that. Um, let's uh, go. Let, let's let's talk about Vader real quick, and then we'll get into a little bit of Easter egg stuff. Uh, so I want to get into to Jin and them also after Vader, because I have well, some interesting theories on them. Well, theory-wise, theory, theory wise, because I have some theories too. We'll save theories for the end? Well, I have some interesting insights into Okay, it. go. Let's do that. Go ahead. All right, so... What did you think of Jyn or so as a character? We'll do them separately here. Um, Jyn or so. I liked her. Um, I think her motivations were, like, correct, you know? And, yeah, I think, I think she had... I, I, the biggest thing is motivation. Why is this character doing what, it, what, what they're doing? Um, and I, I, I believe there was a reason for all of that, you know? I like how we saw her. We don't even know or care why she was in, incarcerated, you know? Yeah. Oh, we might we might have found out. Oh, she stole. Well, they, she's, uh, yeah, Mon Mothma said it. Yeah, Mon Mothma that. said it. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I I, I really I, I I liked her. I thought she was a great addition and lead to this. And she wasn't even like the main character. You know, and it, it's probably controversial. I'm going to say this, but get over it. I didn't see a quote unquote female lead there. I I didn't see a woman lead. I saw a strong actor. I saw a strong actress. It, it doesn't matter her gender or anything like that. She can freaking act. And that character for everything it was, Star Wars is primarily a male driven lead show. Yeah. And they're changing that now. Yeah. They're changing it, but it doesn't bother me if they get the good cast they had here. Right. And, Ray and them, it was it was a good cast last time, but Jen Erso, the way that uh, Felicity Jones played her, just to a T, the core character we need for a Star Wars movie. Yeah, it was great. I say reminded I say, me so much of Luke. Only, only this character was strong. She was already strong. Yes. You know, this was the the best part. It reminded me of Jedi Luke. Let's put it that way. This was, oh, man, a lot of things. Like one of the best parts of this movie. One of the biggest things about this movie was that they basically you get the backstory that you need yes. right that's it this is the dude that did this and this is his kid now we're back and she's a, and she's an adult and that's it and it went yeah. we didn't get all this exposition we didn't get all oh, she movies she worth grew of up she grew up we always saw 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 got her and next thing you know when was the last time you saw him i i saw him like a bunch of years ago. years ago i don't even know i don't even know you know, like it was just, it was done really well. Like it was, it really was. He just, they just, they pushed it along. I didn't feel like it went right into it. Like it was great. What else you got? What other characters? Uh, Cassian was our own Han that I, I, I enjoyed for what he was. He he was the anti-hero. He, he was the, he was, not, he was a good guy thing. that had to do bad things. Yes. And you understood that and you clicked with him immediately. Is what I felt. I uh, um, yeah I I agree. I agree wish we him. had more screen time with him though. Yeah, because what you do get from him dialogue wise, kind of lackluster. Yeah, not a lot. All right, so at one point when he brings he you know after they they're told that they were not you know that they're just gonna basically fucking get the fuck out of there, um, you know, and she's like, well, I want to go get the fucking plans, and Turd and Baz are like, all right, well, we'll go with you. He's like, he comes up with his group of guys and, you know, and then there's this little, there's a little exchange, um, not the strongest, 
you know, set of dialogue. And she's like, yeah. oh, you know, I was expecting you to leave me and this and that. And he's like, well, you know what? And he had a little bit of a change of heart there. Yeah. Um, but still, it was a good scene, you know. Um, his actions spoke louder than his words to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And not a lot of that stuff either, which was great. You know, yeah. not a lot of exposition-y, dialogue-y, let's know these characters. But I also, don't like sand. It's coarse and rough. Screw yeah. that. No. But you know what? I'm sorry. Get over it. I'm coming back with a bunch of people. Right. But don't forget, we also, obviously, they died. So why get invested so much in these characters? Just enough to be like, oh, this person is making a change in their life. And this person is is yeah. is going to do something. It, for me, it was just enough to, to yeah. care for them when those things happened. Anyway. I actually had hope that some of them were going to live. Uh, even at the end there, them on the beach, I was like, come on. Yeah, at I wasn't least one sure. Of these I didn't know. I would have liked that, you know, because... Um, you know, you don't know. You don't know. I, mean, I, they... I really like the characters. They they were good characters. Um, some of them, Mad Mickelson was underused. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But he's so, got. But he's got Doctor Strange. Yeah. He's he's got his own thing going. He's, on. He's got pretty much. He has Death Stranding with Kojima. He has Doctor yeah. Strange. Yeah, he's everything. got his own thing going on. He was just enough. He's one of those guys you throw in there. Same thing with Forrest Whitaker. He didn't play a villain. He didn't play. He a didn't villain. play a villain, right? Um, same thing with Forrest, Forrest Whitaker, though. Like. I like that character. At first, I wasn't yeah. like sure, but then I was like, ah, oh, he just plays him really good. He he he's good at those characters. Those he was those. They just have this thing, and he's just you know, and it's just I don't know. It was good. I liked him a lot. Did you know what I noticed? What's that? Bodhi, um, when Saul was doing the mask thing to breathe, he um he noticed that it sounded a lot like Vader, and we heard that even. Yeah. And I thought that was a pretty nice little callback, a, call a little bit of there. reference. Yep. Um, anything else with character-wise? Um, character I think we covered everybody, um, except Vader and his pettiness to not get over Mustafar. Mustafar. Uh, so let's okay, let's start there. So if you don't remember, Mustafar is where he fought with um, Obi Wan and got I decimated. Hate you. I hate you, and and um and then he was made into Vader. He so they he sets up Vader Castle there, and that's where uh, Darth Vader lives, which is great because we get to see that. Like you get to see where Darth fucking Vader lives. You know what I mean? Like yeah. where he set up shop, um, which is a reference to his extended universe castle. Yes. Yep. So yeah, I mean they did. They brought in a lot of stuff like that. Um, the first scene it we, wasn't on Mustafar in there, but it it's it was a, it's, yeah similar somewhat setting. Somewhat similar. Um, we get to see him in the back of the tank initially. That's the first yeah. thing we get. So we know that this suit causes him a lot of pain and, and rightly so, because when they were putting the suit on him, he still had the burned clothes on him. Yeah. What the hell? Right. They didn't strip him clean and clean him. They didn't clean his body. They didn't do anything that they just, to save his life. They just made him a robot. Like yeah, what the fuck? Really? So, so anyway, no, so just he, nerve pain. That's more or less what he did. Yeah. So anyway, so we see him come out of it like he was in this back to tank. Like that was I didn't expect to see that. And then we get no. the we get the nice uh, force choke, and that we get the nice uh, we get the original helmet with the yeah. with the red glare in it and stuff with the smudges on it and everything. Whoops, sorry, my mic. Uh, yeah. I mean, we got to see that. Um, but the ending, the 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 last scene when he when he boards yeah. the fucking hammerhead. Um, wait, no. It wasn't, no, it, wasn't it was the, the it was the um the other ship. It was the transport. Right. And he's making his way to find these plans. What a fucking fantastic just great. fucking scene. He comes in, they turn around. Oh, what happens is the group of guys, they have the literally the USB stick. They're running, the door closes, and it's got a little yeah. bit. And the guys and the guys like, "Help us! Help us out! Let us out." They hear they hear this someone coming through. Vader comes in, lights the saber. You hear, right? You hear the you hear the yeah. wor the words. You hear the breathing. Lights the saber. Then he di he slowly and methodically fucking dispatches them dispatches all. Dispatches all these. I'm talking. He grabs the guns with the force like he does Hans. Yep. He throw he th force chokes and throws guys against the wall. He slices guys. He's this is the Vader we know. This is the Vader. This is and if you played and very similar to the um another reference for me was uh the Force Unleashed, the first Force Unleashed, yes. right? When you're when you're on Kashyyyk and you're and he's fighting and you you're Vader and all he's doing you're controlling Vader and he just walks. He doesn't run. He doesn't. He do, doesn't jump. Just and walks glide. and you're force throwing and slicing and, and 
Yeah. He that's him. He's so powerful with the hatred and he decimates these guys. Finally the guy puts the hand out and he gives the one guy the stick and 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 then he gets yeah. dude through the fucking chest through the door. Yeah. And and then he's forced and open the he door. He throws it. Yeah. yeah. Fucking what a fantastic fucking scene, man. It was so well done. And I guarantee you, once this comes out on Blu-ray, I'm going to pick it up like I did Force Awakens, of course. And I'm going to watch that scene probably four, five, six times the first day. Yeah. It was it was, it was, was so good. We it were was. like, me and my son, I watched it with my son in the theater, and we, we were just like, this is amazing. Like, it was so good. So fucking kudos, man, because that was, that was again, it just, the more we talk about it, this movie was just fantastic, you know? Um, all right. Talked a lot. Easter egg time. Yeah, let's get into a little Easter egg. Well, first, I just want to ask one question. What's with all the pens? That has to be like an inside joke. Every person from Bodhi to Imperial officers to um, uh, Jin to Bail Organa, everybody has fucking pens, multiple little pens in their sleeves, on their shoulders. Like, what are these pen things for? Everybody has them. I can see if you're like, say, like Bodhi, who's a cargo pilot and you need a uh, some type of apparatus. But like there are just people that are like, you know, in, in the, the government style. Well, that's what I'm. But what it, it was hilarious to me, dude. And it was so well, obvious to me. Anyway, pretty funny. It, it was good. It, the clothing options in here was, or clothing option. The clothing in this was really good. I liked yeah. it. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, some Easter eggs. Now, guys, we don't have them all. So please, if you have some and we missed some, and let us know. And we've mentioned some already. Yeah, we mentioned. So we mentioned references to uh, Rebels, and that's going to be Saw Gerrera. Rebels Extended Universe. Hammer, the Hammerhead ships. Uh, we mentioned some you know, game, video game Easter egg stuff. Um, yep. we, um, what, what else was there? Um, so cameos slash Easter eggs. C-3PO and R2-D2. They're always in every movie. Gotta be. And and obviously they're on that ship, so they need to be there. And they're in there, there twice. They're in there twice, that's right. Um, how about the two guys from the cantina? Yep. One of them is the, a doctor. Uh, His name is Dr. Oh, crap in a hat. I, I forget their names. Yeah. His they're name the is... ones that harass Luke. Yep. Inside My friend the cantina. On 12 a... systems. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to find them. One of them is a doctor, I think, was his name. Doctor something. But um, we, we get... The main character in Re- – oh, not the main character. Is she the main character in Rebels? The uh, Twi'lek. That's not her – oh, one of the Twi – yeah, the the Jedi, yeah. though. Not um... – The green Twi'lek yeah. in Rebels. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's one of the main. I, I forget her name. Sorry. It's been a while. Yeah. I, I'm not caught up on it. Um, she is now a general, was it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, she was a general now. So keeping in tradition with the Jedi away, they become generals. And we get to see the her her ship. We get to see one of the droids from Rebels, um, the R two unit. We get to see. Um, There's a lot of uh, mouse droids. Yes, mouse There's droids. There's the junk droid. Yep. Uh, don't forget, we got the Red Guard inside uh, his chamber. Yes, we protecting got to see him. The, Red the Emperor's Red Guard. Um, Captain An- Captain else? Antilles. Yes, Antilles. There we so go. So Bail Organa, as you know, Jimmy Smith reprises his role as Leia's adopted father. Bail Organa, uh, senator, senator, governor. Um, I think he's still senator. Senator Bail Organa. Um, of course, this is right before uh, the emperor disbands the Senate, which yeah. happens in A New Hope. And um, so he says he he calls for the, for for Antilles on the way out. And uh, and he he makes a reference to Leia. Obviously, he says, I, "I I trust her with my life." He's like, "She's like, you better have someone you could trust." He's like, "I trust her with my life," meaning his daughter. Um, yep. Captain Antilles is, of course, in the first one to get force choked ever in um, a Star Wars anything uh, in the New Hope when he um, he talks back to Vader and he's the one that gets force choked and thrown. That's Captain Antilles, um, who is Bail Organa's uh, pilot. In Revenge in, of the Sith. Yeah. Yep. What um, else? There's just so many. If we miss uh, some, yeah, we just kind of ran through a lot. The video's getting a little long. We just want to, uh, yeah, you know. Literally watch this movie and you'll see every, like, I I, would, I don't want to exaggerate here. Ten minutes maybe, you'll get a reference. 
at yeah. least one reference. And they didn't beat you over the face with them. It was always like, no, hey, they were subtle. Oh, hey, yeah. They were very subtle. Let me, um, can we just, um, before we kind of cut out, uh, I just want to throw a little, um, perspective and not perspective, but like some, some things that I noticed and, um, some thoughts I had on it. And that is the fact overall, the emperor, right? The emperor has, is building an empire and he's, to him, the galaxy's like a, a, a chessboard. Okay, he's yes. got this piece doing this, this piece doing this. You know, his queen is Vader. You know, can move anywhere, do anything. You know, well, follow the reference, man. Can move anywhere on the board, right? I get the reference, but Jesus Christ, Queen Vader, Queen Vader. So, but wait, so Krennic, all right? It 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 dawned on me, you know, Krennic, the Death Star wasn't supposed to be like the the um the emperor's or the you know the the, the empire's end all be all thing it was just Ace one thing yeah it was just like it was a thing that this one dude was working uh, on that they were putting because we saw it at the end of um you know uh, revenge of the sith we saw it being built but yep. you know what i mean so it dawned on me like wow okay because at one point they're like, what's going to happen? What about the, the the rebel fleet up there? As they're trying to get out of there, Krennic is like, you know, we got to get out of here. We're going to, we have to go stop these idiots from taking this data. Then we're going to get out of here. But what about that? He's like, oh, Vader, Vader got them. Vader's going to take care of that. So, and, I, and that hit me like, oh shit, like Vader has his own fucking thing, his own agenda, his own fleet. And he's going to, and at the end, what happens is he pops in from hyperspace and they crash into his ship and he fucking takes people out. And that's when he comes onto the, you know, onto the, he boards onto the ship, but and it yeah. just dawned on me, like, it was just this insight I had, like, holy shit, like, you know, the Death Star wasn't this end-all, be-all thing. It was just a tool, albeit yeah. a large Everything space for the Emperor tool. is a tool. Right, and, and and so it clicked, and I was like, damn it, man, that's kind of crazy. You know, that's like, the downfall th- of the Sith. This guy, Krennic, and, like, he was he was under the gun, too. And, oh, man, Ben Mendelsohn did amazing, because it, he was under the gun. Like, he yeah. was, like, really stressed out and, like... You know, like, shit, like, I gotta get this done. Like, this is, fuck, what are these people doing to me, you know? Him getting force choked was kind of hilarious to me, though. Yeah. Well, it just goes uh, to I was show. like, really? Force Again, it's medicine. that, it, it shows you there's a higher force. There's a higher, you know, you, everyone answers to someone in that universe, so. Yeah. Um, all right. I like how he back-talked to Vader. Well, yeah. Uh, and he's like, well, you're going to tell the Emperor, right? <laughs> Don't overstep your boundaries. <laughs> everyone who everyone who fucking talks back gets a fucking force choke. Force choke for you. It, it force was a choke force for you. Pinch. Force choke. For Wasn't you. even a force choke. But no, dude, that was the same thing he did. To the other guy, remember, he was like this. Yeah. In, yeah. Um, in a new hope. Yeah, um, but still, that's the first time we get, or that's canically, uh, no, technically, and like yeah. Well, technically, I guess. Technically. Yeah. Chronological order. Uh, that's the first force pinch. Pinch, yeah. Yeah. Um. I love the Death Star over Scarif. That we didn't mention that. I oh, love yeah. that. Oh yeah, when scene. it rises, when it when it, sir, uh, the, you know something just came in from hyperspace, something large, and and you look over the horizon, it's the fucking Death Star is rising. And it's like, so in Jedi, it looks like a moon. Yeah. Compared to Scarif, it's a freaking sun. Yeah, absolutely, dude. What about what about the um. The air battles, like when they were fighting on, yes. I can't remember the planet they were on when it was raining, where they the the the, the facility where they where Galen um, died, where they all died. Crap. But anyway, I, I had the name of it on the tip of my tongue. Um, just I know it, but just, Galen's facility. Yeah, just that, just, like the just you know that squadron coming through and bombing and stuff, like just really fucking so fun, like just great, great stuff, man. I mean. Go see the movie. If you have seen the movie and you agree with anything we said or you disagree or whatever you want to say, let us know down in the comments. We appreciate that. I think we're just going to end it here because we're at about an hour now. And I and 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 I think we've – you know, I mean we could talk about this or even more. but I, I could talk about it for quite a while. It was great. It was absolutely great. So um, is that it? Are we going to are we gonna end it? Let's just end it. Yeah, let, let's right. just end it there. Um, go see it. If you haven't seen it, go see it. If you have seen it, let, let us know. know what you think let down below. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you know we're wrong, we're right, you agree, you don't agree, whatever, it doesn't matter. Point is I value your opinion. Hopefully you value mine. Yeah, exactly. And we appreciate everyone watching this video. Go check us out at Third Person Pod um, on all the social medias and MP3 things. Um, and um, 
Oh, at this point when this comes out, uh, this is the week of Christmas. So if you celebrate Christmas, happy Christmas. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, Merry whatever Kwanzaa. you celebrate. I don't, I don't know all the technical terms, but happy have holidays. A happy celebratory thing that you do. That you do but for this I'm time. I'm celebrating of year Christmas, season. so Merry Christmas. Right. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and that's it, guys. So thank you very much, and uh, we will see you guys on the next video.